Okay, hi everyone, um, my name's Sarah and I work for the Jersey Biodiversity Centre and um, one of the projects that we are working on this year is the pollinator project um, and doing some educational work. So um, if you have made a donation today that will be going towards um, the pollinator project educational sessions we're running this summer. Um, we're running them with community groups as well as school groups. So you, if you're in Jersey, you might um, be joining one of those later this year. But as it's starting to warm up, we thought we would just get started with a kind of a talk about um, pollinator um, spaces that people can make in their homes. So today we're going to go through, um, yeah, a few things to do with oh, bee hotels and bug hotels. So we'll go through some species. We'll go through what to look for and what to avoid if you're doing some shopping for one that's pre-made. And um, if you've bought one already and, and you need to adapt it to suit um, bees and bugs, um, we'll give you some tips for that. And also to finish off with, I've got some things to show you how to quite easily and quite cheaply DIY some um, for your garden spaces and balconies. And um, if you have any questions, please just um, raise your hand and or yeah, unmute yourselves and jump in and at any point. Um, or if you want to write them in the chat, we can go through them at the end. And um, so I find when I'm looking for bee hotels, there is just too many to search for. And um, even if you just type it in on Google, you're just bombarded with so many different um, types, different sizes as well. You can see some absolutely gigantic ones that um, are created for like national parks and um, for you know bigger manor houses um, but then you can also find some really small DIY ones where um, you're given all the materials and then you have to make them um, but I find there's just too many they all look different and and it's knowing which ones are really suitable for bees and bugs and which ones um, they look lovely but are maybe less suitable so we're going to go through and um, just some key points to look out for when you're buying online um, is the fake bees and bugs that you see plastered on the imagery and um, really check out have they tested these um, hotels you know if you did a search for that that company have they got real images of um, bees and, and bugs using their hotels or is it just a marketing strategy where they are showing you what you could expect to arrive, but it's nice to know if they've actually tested them and seeing real images um, gives you some idea whether they are suitable or not. Check out in the text. So I find when um, searching on Amazon, you can really um, check out the, the larger text, not the text that's just the name, but further down you can look at text for more information. Spelling mistakes, a typical one is spelling bumblebees wrong and, and butterflies. If those spelling mistakes are, um, are there, you might want to think twice about buying that um, B Hotel. You know, are these um, this company really a creditable credit source for you know making them if they can't spell bumblebee or butterfly? And um, where is it shipped from? And this comes into play if you're getting wildflowers, because wildflowers from um, America are not going to be wild in the UK so do check out if you want to buy a bee and bug hotel that comes with wildflowers you're probably going to want to buy one locally made that's made in the UK so when you're planting those wildflowers they um, you know they are from um, UK um, species um, and if you're looking to um, have patches of wood in your um, bug hotel and go for the unnatural or untreated wood. And who is your target bee and bug comes into play and um, a lot when looking at different ones online. And there's two things to kind of take into consideration. One is the location, so that's where you're going to place it. And the second is what is in that bee and bug hotel. They will all have a housing, so where, um, whether that's a pot um, or a, most of the time it's a wooden frame, but it's what you fill in that that is the habitat requirements for your target bee or bug. So mason bees are a really common species that you can find using bee tubes. Um, I've got some here, so bamboo tubes and they, um, the female she flies in there and the, 
bit that we can see right at the end is the plug um, and that is um, that's when you know that you've got bees using your bee hotel. Naturally they would be going for um, cavities and dead woods. Um, I've seen them in kind of the holes of nails from um, old buildings and, and old manor houses where nails have fallen out but there's a nice cavity for them. Also leaf cutter bees will be using these bee tubes. They plug their holes up with leaves. So it's a slightly different material, but it's the same method. They're going in and laying eggs, filling up the tube and then plugging it at the end. And that's what you'll be able to see if you have leaf cutter bees. What's going on inside is they are, um, the female, she's collecting pollen. She puts the pollen in there, lays an egg and then builds a mud wall and we'll repeat that process until the end where there's the cap, the closure mud or leaf and that's what we see. So when um, you are trying to um, attract solitary bees um, like the red mason bee and the leaf cutter bees, you're looking for tubes of various sizes. So when we say various sizes we mean the, um, the hole itself, so going for ones that um, are larger and smaller you're going to get different bees using different sized holes. So creating a mosaic is going to be really important for attracting lots of different solitary bees. Long tubes, around 15 centimetres is ideal. And cut those tubes to the sides of the box. What you don't want is then kind of overhanging and then this bit starts to get damp and wet and this tube will start to rot. We want to keep it in a waterproof box um, and having the tubes cut to the size is really helpful to keep them dry. But you can also um, use a sloping roof um, to help keep those um, tubes as dry as possible. You can buy some really fancy ones. And um, this is great if you're thinking about installing a bee hotel um, at school or a youth group. These ones where they have a section for you to view. Um, I had a look online and they're around 60 to 90 pounds. It's a bit of an investment, but um, watching what goes on in those tubes um, is definitely a, an amazing educational um, resource. And it's also really fun and quite cool to see. Um, I haven't bought one, but I have seen them in action in places in the UK and it was very exciting. So if you are trying to inspire other people, or talk to people about bees, I would definitely go for one where you can see what's happening in the tubes. So to avoid, if you're making your own, bamboo, when you cut it, one end is open and then you'll have this like um, plug section where the tube is shorter. I see it all the time, people just put these in the wrong way. Make sure that the longer bit of the tube is on the outside. Um, it's a really common mistake um, to also cut the tubes too short and um, to cut them you know, around you know, this length, cut them as short as you can to fill in quite small boxes. Um, tubes with a no blocked end, really easy to fix, um, is to basically shove them in a box so that you've got um, a wall that um, becomes that blocked end. And also with hanging hotels, um, we see this all the time, hanging hotel, bee hotels are not suitable. They blow in the wind and they often fall on the ground. What you need to do is secure them either um, near the ground or on a wall. Bumblebees, you can actually buy boxes for bumblebees. And most species nest um, on the ground or underground, although we have a species called the tree bumblebee, which nests in trees and it has been spotted using um, bird boxes. So if you have a bird box, you might not be getting birds, but you might get some tree bumblebees this year. So with most of the bumblebees that nest on the ground, um, we're looking for boxes um, that you can put on the ground, but then you might want to have a tube that is dug in the soil um, and then the queen bumblebee is searching for that entrance hole which will lead to your box. You can buy them with one or two rooms and you will need to provide some nesting material and um, a lot of the ones that you buy online they 
they come it comes with it but you can use um straw and um, to kind of fill that box and um, bumblebees in the wild they will be using small mammal holes and they'll be going in and using materials left from small mammal nests so um if you've got lots of small mammals in banks and um, check it out because you might have bumblebees there as well so where do you put these boxes? Somewhere sunny. Um, and you can see on this photo here, there's a tiny little blue hole. That's the tube where they've dug it underground, but the box itself is above ground. And that's just to encourage a queen bumblebee to kind of um, go through that tube, mimicking a small mammal um, tunnel and into the larger box. But if you want to attract some tree bumblebees, um, do exactly the same but um, put some nesting material in a bird box and put it up um, as you would to attract a bird but you might get some tree bumblebees. So other bugs, bugs that we often um, get in these hotels are earwigs, bundles of straw, you can put them in things like um, plant pots and um, lots of twigs just breaking them up and squishing them together into crevices is a great habitat for ladybugs, wood lice, centipedes and millipedes. You can get special houses for butterflies as well. But for bugs, what you want is just lots of dead wood really. And um, it doesn't even need to be in a waterproof case. So just building and, and collecting lots of dead wood, making a pile, um, in your garden is going to be really um, suitable for the bugs and what will happen is this will get really wet over time um, and start to degrade and that's what a lot of bugs are going to be really um, looking for. You can see I just grabbed this from the garden we've got some tiny um, holes there from some beetles so it doesn't take long for um, the bugs to arrive um, if you're using dead wood. If you've bought one and it's got this mesh over some dead wood, just kind of peel that away and refill it when you need to. Um, and you can fill it with dead wood that you can collect around your garden or um, you can put pine cones in there as well. Now, butterflies do use um, kind of these bug bee hotels, um, but only some. The species that overwinter as adults um, are the ones that need somewhere to live during the colder months. So red admiral, peacock, small tortoiseshell and comma are all species that overwinter as adults. And I've got a photo here of one hibernating, but you can also buy these hotels where there's slits and small crevices and create these narrow spaces for butterflies. During the summer, they're not very um, well used by by butterflies, they'll be sleeping in bushy plants, but when it comes to winter, that's when um, they'll be looking for somewhere to hibernate for those species. Adapting what, you're, what you've bought is really easy. If you are able to do a bit of DIY, like hammering in a nail, attaching a bracket like this one here, and you know, don't go out, you don't need to go out and buy a new one, essentially, you can just make some small changes. So if you bought a hanging one, you can attach a bracket that you could um, kind of like a drain pipe bra bracket that you can get from any DIY shop um, and then secure that onto a fence um, so that it is um, stable so that the, the tubes are not going to be jiggling around. Another handy fix is if you've got one that um, hangs and you've got a space to just hammer a nail into the fence. Or if you're able to, um, if you don't have a fence, you could you know, hammer it onto a stake and then just hammer the stake into the ground. If you've bought one that doesn't have a back to it, so when you look through the tubes, you can just see the light of day, um, you could just cut a, a little piece of wood and nail that to, to the back of your, um, your bought B hotel, um, and that will provide the back for your tubes, like with our bamboo tubes, this bit here. If you haven't got that, just nail some um, material, some wood on to create that. There's loads of DIY inspiration. So I hope those helpful tips 
Um, yeah, we'll give you some ideas of how you can change once you've got, but there are some ways you can DIY and I think DIY is, is the most fun. So you'll need something waterproof for the bees and you'll need some bamboo tubes. And um, you can buy these in like really long strips at garden centers and then just use some secateurs to chop them up. Um, and then pop these in um, with the hole and the long bit facing outside. And um, use a mixture of materials. So don't make one with just loads of bee tubes. Mix it up um, with some twigs, some straw. Um, you can use broken pottery and kind of create um, some spaces for spiders to live in as well. And you need to make sure it's secured. So if you are doing it in um, something that needs to be nailed, once you've got all that material in, you will find it gets a bit heavy. So um, you might need somebody to help you when you're nailing it um, up on a fence post or um, you can just pop them on the ground if you are doing one specific for bugs and um, it doesn't need to be high up. So yeah, this is one that's been made with bricks, lots of collected wood. And they've also drilled some holes into in the wood for the bees. Some quick don'ts. Um, don't leave the tubes to rot, they need to be dry. Don't use any um, plastic in your bee hotels. Um, it's quite frankly just littering if you leave it there and over a really long period of time. I see also that people like to mix it up and put some household appliances. Um, we've got a toaster in the picture um, there and also a mouse cable. Those things are not going to be used by bees or bugs, but behind the mouse there's loads of lovely wood that is definitely going to be used by the, um, by the bugs. So DIYs, um, the ones with the tubes are for solitary bees, they need to be off the ground and they need to be somewhere solid, kind of securely attached. Um, so you can get things, you can buy the, these bamboo tubes, these cardboard tubes, you'll need paper scissors and, you know, to kind of tie them all together. Um, most of this you can get at garden centres, but um, yeah, the bee tube, these kind of bamboo tubes are fairly, really easy to cut as well. Bumblebee nests, you, um, bumblebee conservation, I've got this fab little DIY using a flower pot, a slate tray, some hose pipe and nesting material to create a bee hotel. So the hose pipe is the entrance way that mimics the small mammals and that's dug underground. There's nesting material in an upside down flower pot and then most flower pots have this little hole, so um, the um, slate goes over the top of that to stop the rain coming in for the nest. So your positions, where you're going to put your five star hotel, they need to be somewhere sunny, somewhere sheltered for bumblebees. That tube needs to be underground and, and the box needs to be on the ground. For mason bees, you're looking at around 30 centimetres off the ground. And for leaf cutter and tree bumblebees, you're looking a little bit higher at one metre plus. If you're looking um, just to attract um, lots of invertebrates, which will be fantastic food for um, other animals like toads um, and birds, you know, your wood can just go straight on the ground and that will be a perfect habitat for those Lots of bugs. And um, for more information about how to make your gardens wildlife friendly, I recommend you visit the Pollinator Project, um, where we're putting lots of helpful guides um, and advice about um, things to do in, in your home, in your garden, or at school. So please pop along there um, for more information and to get involved. And we'd love to hear and see what you get up to um, in your wild spaces this summer. Thank you very much for listening. Does anyone have any questions?